Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Well, guys, have you heard any loud booms if you're in the L.A. area? Don't worry, it was just a U.S. Army training exercise. So we have a series of loud booms that rocked downtown Los Angeles on Monday night. It startled some people who complained on social media. But L.A. police said there's no reason to be alarmed. The noises were part of a U.S. Army training exercise involving aircraft and weapon simulations in urban settings. The training is set to run through Saturday in L.A. and Long Beach. <clears throat> what do you think about that, huh? Does that make you say, uh, what? What's going on here? Well, I've been hearing it from you guys. I've been hearing from a lot of you guys about this. But it's not just L.A. <clears throat> I'm still getting it from people in, uh, in Texas and other areas close to military bases uh, that are, are saying that there's heightened activity going on. Uh, many people have said that there was a little bit of a lull after we had that rush of activity, and now it seems like everything is on, you know, basically a very, very fast pace with lots of military activity going on at the military bases, nonstop firing and training and shooting. So this out of the LA Times is saying residents may hear sounds associated with the training. The LAPD said in news release, each location selected enables special operations teams and flight tr crews to maintain maximum readiness and proficiency to validate equipment and exercise standard safety procedures. The training is essential to ensure service members are fully trained and prepared to defend our nation overseas. Hmm, interesting how they worded that. Police said residents near the training locations would be notified beforehand, but some on social media said they were caught off guard. As you see this over here, Alyssa Walker, I feel like they could have gotten word out about this a little bit better, says a terrified mom frantically searching Twitter. Andrew Blanken Blankstein, to those wondering about the military helicopters in the sky over the L.A. area, here's your answer. Army, Army Media Advisory, February 2019. And so it, it just say, it says what we just talked about. So interesting. There's a video here as well for you guys to t check it out. And there's some comments. So do so. It's interesting times uh, that we're living in. And I think we're seeing the bigger picture now, what's going on. And so over here we have the Pentagon sending another 3,750 troops to the southwest border. And uh, the Pentagon said Sunday it will send 3,750 more troops to the U.S.-Mexico border to put up another 150 miles of concertina wire and to provide other support for customs and border protection. The additions will bring the total number of active duty troops to the border to 4,350. So we're increasing the size of uh, the force down there. And... Maybe they're not building the wall right now, but they're they're trying to build something, and they have troops there. We have the Russian Navy. Get this weapon. has a new weapon that makes targets hallucinate and vomit. What do you think about that? Do you think that there's any chance that weapons like that have been tested out already? Do you think that? The Russian Navy reportedly has a new weapon that can disrupt the eyesight of targets as well as make them hallucinate and vomit. The Russian state news agency RIA Novosti reported that a Russian military contractor has installed the weapon on two Russian warships. The weapon fires a beam similar to a strobe light that affects the target's eyesight, making it more difficult for them to aim at night. During testing, volunteers reportedly used rifles and guns to shoot targets that were protected by the weapon. The volunteers reported having trouble aiming because they couldn't see. Additionally, about half the volunteers said they felt dizzy, nauseated, and disorientated. About 20% of the volunteers reported experiencing hallucinations. The weapon, called the fill-in, has reportedly been installed on the Admiral Gorshkov and Admiral Katsanov, two Russian warships. The weapon is expected to be installed on more ships that are currently being built. And it was developed by Rus Electronics, a Russian state-owned developer of electronics and other technologies. 
And so over here off the drive, we see Russia plans to launch tiny space plane off back of high-flying M55 research jet. The new development comes amid a general surge of interest in air launch space access concepts, especially in the United States. And uh, we have basically, we're in a new uh, arms race. And it, without a doubt, you know, there's just a whole new arms race going on and it's going on to a higher and higher level and it's really an arms race that's a space arms race when you get down to it so it's kind of like we all that uh, President Reagan way way back was talking about is is kind of being picked up here and uh, with the deterioration of relations going on globally it is definitely a race and Russia plans to plans new missile systems to counter the U.S. by 2021. Russia will race to develop two new land-based missile launch systems before 2021 to respond to Washington's plan to exit from a landmark nuclear arms control pact, it said on Tuesday. And um, President Putin said at, a, at the weekend that Russia has suspended the Cold War era intermediate range nuclear forces treaty which bans both nations from stationing short and intermediate range land-based missiles in Europe. Moscow and Washington accuse each other of violating the treaty, and Putin said Russia had acted after the United States announced it was withdrawing from the pact. Washington had made clear it planned to start research, development, and design work on new missile systems, and, Ru and Moscow will do the same, Putin said. The Russian military should start work on creating land-based launch systems for an existing ship-launched cruise missile, the Caliber, and for longer-range hypersonic missiles, which travel at least five times the speed of sound, he said. And those are the things that are very ominous feeling to me, those hypersonic ones. So, you know, we're, we have this tremendous new arms race underway. Was that really a, a good idea? Is that really something the world needs in these times? Well, regardless, we have it. Russia's economic growth looks too good to be true. Under a new top statistician, recent data has been much more optimistic, and that doesn't make them correct, as we see uh, President Putin. And uh, it really makes you wonder, because when you look at, like I've shared with you guys, when you look at their military budget, apparently it's going down, down, down. And yet there's more and more and more high-tech stuff coming out um, all the time that is touted as being, you know, as good or better than the U.S.'s stuff in some ways. And, of course, there's always the boasting and, you know, it's, it's always a game when you get down to it. Uh, but it's interesting because, you know, what Russia spends officially is less than 10% 10, 10 of what the U.S. spends. So it's very, very interesting to look at all this. And we take everything with a grain of salt. So President Trump to call for bipartisanship as he threatens to declare emergency. And we have the State of the Union speech Tuesday night here. It's coming at a time of deep partisan division. Well, isn't that the State of the Union always, right? It's a, it's a joke. It's kind of a joke. I think we all view it as a sham and a joke in, in many ways. And we'll see what he's going to uh, talk about. A lot of people seem to be nervous over this. And, uh, you know, it, it's just status quo that there's always this perceived uh, contention between the two and, and not getting along and always at odds and fighting against each other. And then we see pictures of, you know, Michelle Obama hugging uh, George Bush and it really truly looks affectionate you know so it's like it, how much of this is all an illusion and a show I think a lot in my opinion Trump inaugura inaugural committee is subpoenaed for documents and uh, it's just more of that political posturing going on and when we got so much going on in this world, we have France carrying out a rare simulation of a nuclear deterrence strike. And uh, this is, you know, rare and irregular and kind of unusual, but France conducted a rare 
Simulation of a nuclear deterrent mission, its armed forces ministry said on Tuesday at a time when the United States plans to exit a nuclear arms control pact with Russia. The 11-hour mission, which included refueling, testing all phases of an attack mission involving a Rafael warplane. These real strikes are scheduled in the life of the weapon system, French Air Force spokesman Colonel, <laughs> Colonel uh, Cyril Duvier said. They're carried out fairly regu regularly in intervals, but remain rare because the rear missile, the real missile without its warhead, is fired. It did not say where, uh, when the test was carried out, but officials declined to say how often they take place. The mission comes as Paris looks to ensure its long-term nuclear dissuasion program. With Europe increasingly worried about security as tensions rise between Washington and Moscow, Paris is also concerned over North Korea's nuclear weapons program and Iran's ballistic missile capabilities. France spends about 3.5 billion euros annually to maintain its 300-strong submarine and air nuclear weapons stockpile. It plans to modernize its cap cap uh, capacity to spend 5 billion euros a year by 2020. So it put an end to nuclear weapons testing in 1996 after a test in the South Pacific sparked global outrage and has since become a signatory of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. And then obviously the INF is done, so you have some countries in Europe obviously worrying and concerned about this. So French police talk about shooting Yellow Vest protesters in a leaked tape. Police in the city of Toulouse come under fire as several officers were caught on tape discussing plans to shoot the protesters involved in the clashes. The comments were made in the police command room as a broadcast as broadcaster France 3 reported where the officers were watching an intense standoff between police and demonstrators unfolding on the streets of Toulouse. While the officers aren't seen in the video, the voices are heard saying what a bunch of bastards and the blank. When the clashes turned violent, then a female officer is heard saying, but you have to shoot. And the other male officer replying, when I tell you to line up two or three rounds. The video was recorded during the Yellow Vest protests on January 12th, but it was only released recently when the French police labor union VG posted it on Twitter. The union distanced themselves from the comments in the footage, saying the words of the policemen have exceeded their thoughts. Twitter users have also slammed police officers for their words. So this is uh you know this is still ongoing remember like three four weeks ago they were trying to talk about it downplaying it saying it's dying out it's dying out it's not dying out that's just them trying to to play this down because this is just really it's just still in its infancy so you know this could get uh really serious very very quick especially if some police officers take it upon themselves to to do something along those lines then what are we really going to see out there so maduro issues a threat to jail venezuela's opposition leaders so says uh, this out of the guardian and so this situation is just another one of those you know situations globally that is just a mess and um there's so much talk going on <clears throat> right now, and Paul Begley uh, was showing the other day some uh, tanks going to the border again, you know, as, as basically it's just a waiting game right now. When is the invasion going to start? That's the question. Flotilla of Venezuelan oil tankers are stranded in the Gulf of Mexico. So on Monday evening, the embattled regime of Maduro suffered its latest blow when 11 of the 14 members of the Lima Group, an organization created with the singular aim to bring about a peaceful end to the crisis, backed up opposition leader Juan Guaido as the legitimate ruler of Venezuela. And in a declaration issued by the group, the governments of Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, Panama, Paraguay, and Peru reiterate their recognition and support 
for Juan Guaido and called on the international community to take measures to prevent the Maduro regime from conducting financial and trade assets uh, transactions abroad, from having access to Venezuela's international assets, and from doing business in oil, gold, and other assets. And, uh, you know, as we were talking about, what's this really all about? You see the way it's blocking down here, with the blue being on the side of pushing Guaido in, and the red being on the side of back in Maduro. And over here, out of RT, oil, gold, and other riches are behind Trump's Venezuela crusade, as we see some gold. Venezuela's natural reserves, such as oil, gas, and gold, encourage the U.S. to seek regime change there. President Maduro told RT, saying he won't be remembered as a leader who showed weakness and ignorance to his people. So what is Donald Trump's casus belly against Venezuela? The casus belly is the oil of Venezuela, the riches of Venezuela. It's gold, gas, iron, diamonds, and other material riches. So these remarks come as Western nations are piling on overwhelming pressure on the Latin American country. And so, yeah, we're going to see if this actually comes to blows. Uh, it feels likely unless something happens, and you just never know what could happen, really. You really don't know what could happen. And we have uh, Erd Erdogan moving to seize Turkey's largest bank. And, you know, Turkey ranked as uh, one of the countries that is not free in the annual rankings uh, thereof. And uh, as we know, he's trying to recreate the Ottoman Empire. And so we have him moving to seize Turkey's largest bank. And as well, so many people have gone disappearing in that country. So this is out of the Daily Mail. And there's a new study uh, done by some authors that say that just as we were told about global warming and now many people believe that it's the opposite case that we have grand solar minimum and we're heading into a deep ice age according to some scientists that might last three five hundred years or more well there are some that believe that the population is not going to keep going up but it's going to start going down and because of changes going on worldwide so the <clears throat> the whole global warming story they're equating the same thing with the population and saying that the reality is just exactly the opposite so you know we have the un long warning that the world's population is fast approaching a point where earth's resources may not be able to support humanity there are currently 7.7 .7 billion people living on the planet expected to climb to 9 billion by 2050, 2050. But Canadian journalist John Ipsum and political scientist Daryl Brickner have found that these predictions have missed the mark completely. In Empty Planet, the pair re-examines the forecasting models to conclude that global population will start dropping in about 30 years and warn that once the decline begins, it will never end. And so this study, <coughs> uh, Empty Planet, upends the long-held assumptions about global population, using statistics and interviews with people all around the world to paint a fuller picture of the issue. So the UN forecast relies on fertility rates, migration rates, death rates, the authors explain in an interview with Wired, but other factors such as urbanization, speed, and the expansion of women's education have been left out. Much of Africa, in particular, is experiencing both of these things. Taking improvements in female education into account causes the estimates to drop to 8 to 9 billion for the year 2100 from the currently predicted 11 billion. And that's just one cultural, cultural variable. So, you know, you could always twist numbers any way you want, and we see that, and, and we see them always twisting numbers, and you gotta, you, you know, there's always this ulterior motive going on. So look at Japan, for instance, and Japan's population has just consistently gone down, 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 as people has become, have become very, very westernized and, and are not having kids anymore, for the most part. They're all about their jobs. They're completely focused on their, on their work, and they're married to the corporations. And we see that type of um, 
thing happening in Europe overall as well and in many many countries in the Western world if there were not any sort of migration going on the populations would be declining and so that is what they're talking about happening on a global level so as as people end up getting more westernized as civilization becomes more and more westernized and truly we're married more to the corporations we're married more to just working and not having kids then the population will start to to drop and uh you know i think that is an assumption that that might actually be correct and then there's of course other functions as well of what we're seeing going on on a big scale and you guys know what we're talking about so gray squirrel is on the menu as diners turn to the wild meat to help boost the reds as we see this adorable little guy and we have squirrels that come visit us every day that we feed and no i can't see eating them i just can't see that but this is believe it or not something that is rising in popularity yes squirrel it's very sustainable they say it's cruelty free um, which i don't think the squirrels would agree to that and so the, the gray squirrel is one such animal classed as an invasive pest which has few predators in the wild and outcompetes the endangered red squirrel. To reduce waste, chefs are using the carcasses of cold squirrels in pancakes, croquets, and even lasagna. So even Tisdell Downs, who runs a restaurant native in London's Borough Market, makes squirrel ragu by slowly cooking the meat from its hind legs. His wild boar supplier happens to help with gray squirrel culling and sends the carcasses down to the restaurant. He says customers are increasingly interested in eating cruelty-free wild meat and minimizing their carbon footprint, which makes squirrel a popular choice. And so he, he told the Sunday Telegraph, squirrel is one of the most sustainable proteins you can cook, really. It's almost exactly the same in taste as rabbit. It's tasty. It's not as gamey as rabbit. It's a nice white meat. It's good to cook slowly and make stews and ragus for lasagna. And it's very good for you. It's quite lean. Okay, so I don't know if any of you guys are going to put squirrel on your menu soon. I don't anticipate doing that personally. Uh, Colorado jogger kills a mountain lion with his bare hands after it attacked him on a running trail and bit him on the face, back, legs, and arms. And so this man was jogging on the west ridge of Horse Tooth Mountain open space. He was attacked from behind by a juvenile lion, but he killed it in self-defense. The unidentified jogger sustained non-life-threatening injuries on Monday. And uh, they did not identify him, and it just basically it jumped him from behind. And I'm sure, you know, that has to be a surprise, getting jumped from behind by a mountain lion. And, you know, these are r relatively rare attacks. And adult mountain lions can weigh, can weigh anywhere between 110 and 180 pounds, and females 80 to 130 pounds. So a juvenile is likely to weigh significantly less, particularly if it was a female. The sex of the animal was not reported. The runner was able to get himself to a local hospital, and his injuries were serious but not life-threatening. And so there have been 20, less than 20 fatalities in the United States in the past 100 years by lion attacks. But 16 known attacks have occurred in Colorado since 1990. So that is definitely one of the areas that's more likely. And get this out of natural news, antibiotics may stop the growth of new brain cells. So concludes a study. So antibiotics have been heavily scrutinized for killing off the good bacteria that live in your gut. But it turns out bacteria aren't the only thing the antibiotics can kill. Now recent research has found there's even more alarming risk that comes with taking these allegedly innocuous drugs. They stop the growth of new brain cells. Scientists say antibiotics strong enough to kill gut bacteria are also potent enough to disrupt the development of new brain cells in the hippocampus region of the brain. And the hippocampus is part of the limbic system and is most recognized for its roles in memory formation and spatial recognition. 
As sources note, the hippocampus is typically the first region in the brain affected by Alzheimer's. In fact, damage to the hippocampus is a hallmark trait of the condition. Alzheimer's is already a leading cause of death in the United States. And estimates suggest that some 14 million people will be affected by it by 2050. And now it turns out one of the most heavily prescribed class of drugs in the world interferes with the formation of new brain cells in that very same region too. So antibiotics are anti-brain cell too. Researchers have long studied the effects of antibiotics on the GI tract, but science is only just beginning to look how these over-prescribed drugs affect the whole system, and these latest fi findings aren't doing Big Pharma any favors. A team of German scientists recently published research which demonstrated antibiotics capable of killing gut bacteria are capable of harming more than their intended target. Of course, it's, a it's a, something that hits the whole system. And so, you know, here we're, we're finding out all these things and uh, touches on probiotics. Probiotics can help, and they can, as well as exercise, help mitigate the harmful effects of an that antibiotics are having on the brain. In fact, she suggests that probiotics and physical activity should be considered real treatment options. But, of course, that doesn't necessarily bring in the same money as what we get brought into the big pharma by antibiotics and that's always really number one isn't it when you get down to it it's all about money so my friends as always thumbs up support the channel please do subscribe click the bell get all the notifications and share with as many as possible as we wake them up to everything that's happening in this world as always my friends stay safe god bless and namaste